wearing the wrong shoes destroyed my college football career and may have caused all kinds of untold damage in my life. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about feet, but more importantly, I'm gonna to talk to you about shoes, the importance of wearing the right shoes and what kind of shoes I wear now. And I'll never go back to wearing normal shoes ever again. But first, let me tell you a quick story about my experience of discovering how wearing the bad shoes, wearing the wrong shoes, ruined my college football career. I was recruited to play Division I AA college football mainly because I'm fast. I ran really, really fast. In fact, on, in my sophomore year, when we did the 40-yard dash, I ran a 4.340. I was the fastest one on the team. In fact, there was only one guy that was faster than me, and he was a running back. The only problem was he was super injury prone. I think he hurt his shoulder. He just did not take a hit. And so the following year, he went down and the team was without a good running back. All the other run, running backs were, were terrible. I was a nose guard, I was an undersized nose guard. And the reason why I was recruited is because I was so fast off the ball that I would lead the team in sacks. And so the coach didn't know what to do. No running back, but the fastest guy on the team is on the defensive line. Let's get him a ball in his hand. And so they gave me the opportunity to play running back my junior year. And that year was my best year ever. I led the team in sacks and touchdowns. I was running around people and running down quarterbacks. And it was pretty, it was pretty damn awesome. Uh, I was all American. I was featured in all kinds of magazines and newspapers. I was like the talk of the campus, right? I was big man on campus my junior year. And it was high hopes for what I would accomplish my senior year. And of course, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, NFL, professional football. Back then, there was a, a, a league called the XFL that was sort of a spinoff from uh, the WWE, right? And so it was like uh, the WWE, Vince McMahon created a football team or football league, and that came out right when I was about to graduate. And I was like, boom, I'll go play there. I'll play in Canada. I'll play anywhere. It doesn't really matter. I was geeked. I was set. I was ready to be a pro. At least I did in my mind. Well, that year or that summer going into my senior year, uh, I was training like never before. And I got a brand new pair of Nike running shoes. I figured I'm going to be a running back. I'm going to work on my running. Let me get some damn running shoes. Let me show you what the running shoes look like. Now, these aren't the running shoes themselves, but I remember when I went to the store, they looked so sleek and clean and cool, and I couldn't wait to, I couldn't wait to rock them. They, they look almost like this. They were thin, and they came to a point in the front, right? These are rock climbing shoes, right, if you don't know. These are rock climbing shoes. But these were running shoes that looked a lot like this. And if, you're, if you run track, you might know what I'm talking about, right? If you run track and you wear spikes, you know that these running shoes are narrow, right? I don't know why they were narrow, but they were narrow. And I didn't know any better. I have wide feet. And of course, I had all kinds of postural distortions at the time too, but it wasn't really a problem. Uh, it actually was to my mechanical advantage to have an anterior pelvic tilt because it made me lean forward. And so I was really fast, partially because that anterior pelvic tilt. I think most really fast athletes have some form of a forward lean. And what that would do is, you know, if you can imagine the feet, my feet, I'm always up on my toes, right? I would run on my toes. I would run on my toes. Like my, like my, I would try to have as little surface area as possible while I was sprinting. Bang, 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 right? I was five foot nine, 210, running a 4.340. Got some running shoes and destroyed my feet. I didn't really even know what was going on. Like I was just so unaware. I started to get bunions. I, I, they call it turf toe, right? I don't think they call it bunions until it's chronic. I had turf toe because the way I was running in these tight ass shoes that pinched my toes together, it would cause my big toe, because you imagine the big toes here, to start pushing this way, and then this knuckle, right? The big bunion knuckle was inflamed. And I had to start walking real gingerly because I was in so much pain. Well, needless to say, that summer, I trained my face off. Even though I had that pain, I went into summer camp, and I wasn't the same guy. I was not, this, I, I was not the same athlete. I was still strong, 
I was still fast, but because I couldn't make that solid contact with the ground, to have that ground reaction force to run real fast, I ran like a sissy. I was afraid to get hit because I, I couldn't lean in. I couldn't lean into the, to the, to the, to the defender. That was a part of what made me a good running back. Not only was I fast, but I didn't mind taking a hit. I'll put my shoulder down and just mow somebody over. But that year, I was afraid to do that, right? It was like a, it was like a primal fear because of the injury. And that's how injuries, injuries will destroy you, not just because of the mechanics, because of what it does to your mind. My mind was messed up. And so I, I'm trying to run like freaking Barry Sanders. Meanwhile, I'm a, you know, uh, I'm a bus, right? I don't know the new football players, but Barry Sanders used to like ping pong around. And then uh, Jerome Bettis was like just a big dude and he would pummel people. So I was sort of like a mix between the two of them, but my Bettis, style I had to go to the side because I was too afraid to try to run around people and I was just not I'm not I wasn't quick enough to run around the defenders so wearing tight ass shoes gave me turf toe and I had a terrible year I went from having the best year of my life best season of my life to a has been in a matter of months and, and it was my last season and nobody looked at me I sent film of my junior year. People wanted to know, hey, what happened to your senior year? I was damaged goods, fellas. Damaged goods. Why? Because of the fucking shoes. Wrong shoes. Now, over the years, since then, I discovered that, hey, I need to buy these rare type of shoes. Now, mind you, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit older than a lot of you guys. So back then, there was no consideration for for real wide feet or barefoot shoes, right? This is all trending and cool now. And today I'm gonna to introduce you to a pair of shoes that I love. I'm gonna show you all my favorite shoes. In fact, I got, it, I got them all right here, you know? I'm on a tripod, so I'm not gonna move it so you can see it, but I got my table full of shoes right now. I'm gonna show you the best shoes and I'm gonna give a big shout out to a company that sent me some shoes because I was talking about shoes on Instagram. I'll do that in a moment. But back then, it was like I had to go to a special store to buy shoes that were a little bit wider, that were more comfortable, that I could walk in, I could run in. But by then, you know, my career was, all, was totally over, and um, these shoes were ugly. You know, I had to wear ugly, big-ass orthopedic shoes. I looked like a boomer. It was a damn shame. But I did what I had to do, and I wore those damn shoes, and I bought those pair, that pair of shoes. It was, I think they were Asics. Right? I don't remember exactly what they were, but they were, you, had, you had, to get, had to get them in like double wide. They would call them like a D2 or like a, or they would call them like E something. Anyway, they had all these weird letters next to, the, next to the shoe size because it was like, oh, these are for retards. Oh, these are for those weird people with wide feet, right? And so I had to buy those weird shoes. Of course, me, I don't mind looking weird, so I just wore the weird shoes. And then... I grew up and I became a trainer, I became a coach, and I started to recognize that it's important to be barefoot, right? I, I, I never really rehabilitated my feet, but I started being more barefoot. And if you watch some of my videos on this channel from many years ago, you'd hear me talking about me being grounded in my bare feet. You'd see me that when I make videos, I'll be my bare feet. I became a barefoot advocate, right? Barefoot advocate, and that's what I was until like this, the world started catching on, which is pretty cool actually. You know, I was thinking about this today as I was skimming through and I was looking at like things that people are doing these days that are evolved, they're, they're awoke, awakened, not woke, but awakened to many of the, much of the bullshit that our, you know, our generation, generation before was through. Side note, you know, what tipped this off to me today was I saw one of my friends, he and his wife, they had a baby and now all of a sudden his, his wife is like interested in like breastfeeding instead of giving formula that's like full of seed oils and uh, hydrogenated bullshit and, and corn syrup to their baby. And I'm, you know, my oldest is gonna be 20. And me and my wife, I don't know, I'm always ahead of my time. I'm always ahead of my time. Me and my wife, we did breastfeeding, home birthing, no backs back in, you know, 2002. So, uh, but it's cool to see people catching on and shit like that now. One of the things that people have caught on to recently, I say maybe the past 10 years, is how fucked up our feet are because of the damn shoes we've been wearing. And I, and I, I can't get it through my head. People wear shirts, or, they, or let me put it this way, the manufacturers make shirts that fit. In fact, the manufacturers go so out of the way as to make the sizes of clothing and dresses bigger so fat bitches don't feel bad about wearing high sizes. 
They'll do anything to support your self-esteem. This big bitch wearing a small? But yet, what we put on our feet? Thin, narrow, pointed, crappy shoes. It never crossed anybody's mind. It was just a matter of, hey, you gotta squeeze your feet in there. It's almost like foot bonding that the Chinese do, except men are doing it here. Why, for style? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, right? But what kind of style, what, what kind of person sacrifices function for style? Most of us. So anyway, here's where the story gets good, and I'm gonna transition into what I do now and what I suggest you do. When we did the Strength Camp Challenge, first Strength Camp Challenge 2014, if you guys don't remember what that is, that's when I invited people from all over the world to come to my gym, and we did, a, we did a, an event. It was a strongman, hybrid, athlete type event. We did it for a few years in a row. It was a big thing, it was huge. I'd like to do it again someday, but we'll see. God has other plans for me right now. And we got a sponsor called Zero Shoes. And I was like, man, this is awesome. They got shoes. They call them Zero Shoes because they're minimalist. Minimalist shoes, nice flat shoes, wide foot shoes. And they were one of the sponsors for the Strength Camp Challenge. That's why I brought that up. And uh, I was geeked about the product. In fact, you know, even though they're a sponsor, I was like, hey, that's cool. Thank you for sponsoring. I went and bought a lot of their shoes. I bought a lot of their products. I bought sandals because you know old Uncle E like wearing sandals. I live in Florida. I'm a Caribbean boy, too. So I bought the sandals. Man, they were good for a little while, and then they fell apart, but I was forgiving, right? Because they, they were made in China. These Chinese cheap flat foot shoes, zero shoes, they were very popular. They were new on the block. Fell apart on me. I said, hey, shit happens. It's a fluke. Doesn't matter. I actually went and bought another pair. Now I think back, I should have contacted the owner because we were, I knew who he was because he was, a, he was, a, he was a, a sponsor. But I was like, you know, I like to patronize. I like to, I, like to, I like to spend money where I think it's doing good for the world. It's doing good for other people. And I was like, I'm, I'm sold. I'm bought on this. Anyway, so I not only bought another pair of sandals, but I also bought a pair of shoes, man. And let me tell you. This is what they look like now. This is what the zero shoes. I spent over $100 on these shoes. And listen, like, barefoot shoes, I appreciate you. I appreciate, I appreciate the fact that you go out of your way to make good shoes that are flat, not good shoes. You don't make good shoes. Let me tell you that right now. You don't make good shoes, but you make flat shoes. So the concept is good, but why? Why did this shit start falling apart? I gotta put duct tape on it. The heels on both of them started falling apart almost instantly. Two strikes. Do I give you a third? I said, no, I am not doing it. So I just typed the, I taped these shits up not too long ago when I was doing some barefoot walking. I said, that's it. Well, anyway, these weren't the only barefoot shoes I had. They just, they, they were comfortable and it's a shame, but they're crap, so don't buy them, right? I started to investigate and there are a lot of different, nowadays there's a lot of different barefoot shoe companies that are, that are popping up. B-A-R-E foot, bare like naked foot shoes, and they're pretty cool. But there's a bunch of them here that I want to share with you, but I'm going to begin with the ones that are called B-E-A-R, barefoot shoes. Why? Because when they found out that I was a barefoot enthusiast and I was rocking these, oh, by the way, Vibrams, I never wore any Vibrams. I would wear Vibrams, you know, the ones with the toes. Um, I, just never, I just never got them, you know? So if those of you who are sitting there, hey, Elliot, why don't you get some Vibrams, Vibrams, Vibrams? I just, I just haven't, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe Vibram wants to send me a pair, just like Barefoot sent me a pair. So I posted this on Instagram, let them know that, you know, hey, I like wearing Barefoot shoes, they're helping my feet, they really do help my feet. They help my feet, help my toes spread when I walk, I can feel all of the nooks and crannies of the ground, it really, it, force, it forces the ground reaction force to be different. So. My hip positioning is different, my knees, my hips, my shoulders, everything, my whole posture is different when I wear flat shoes. I can never go back to wearing normal high heel. Like, why the fuck do men wear high heels? Like, they make the shoes with heels on it like that. Like, what are we, women, right? What am I, trying to, try, I don't know, I don't even get it. I don't get high heels at all, even on women. I tell my wife to wear flat shoes. My wife don't wear no damn high heels. High heels are stupid. Stupid for men and, stu and stupider for women. But anyway, so Barefoot, barefoot Shoes, B-A-R-E, who uh, was introduced to me by my friend Rich Graham, who's you know, a guy that teaches me firearms training. We do an event every year called Protector Summit. 
And he was like, yo, you need to get you still some barefoot shoes. So interestingly enough, they reached out to me when they saw my Instagram post and they sent me these. Now, from what I understand, uh, this company is, was either founded or is owned or the CEO is Chris Duffin. And if you're a lifter, you probably know who Chris Duffin is. Uh, super strong dude. I watched a lot of interviews with him several years ago when he was on uh, the, the Mark Bell podcast. Big shout out to Mark Bell podcast. Happy that that channel is back because they got banned for some weird reason. But anyway, they sent me these and I'll tell you right now, these are the most comfortable shoes ever. Zero shoes, you get a zero. Barefoot shoes, you get a 100. And so I've been rocking these around the house. They, all, they look so nice and you know they're suede. They look so nice, I almost don't even wanna lift in them, but they're made for lifting, right? They're made for lifting. So I've been rocking these. I might just get a pair. I might just get another pair just for, uh, just for, just for rocking for style, right? I mean, they look a little bit goofy, but I'm a goofy guy, so I don't really care but a pair for lifting. One thing I would say before I introduce you to all the other cool ones here and, and another thing that Barefoot Shoes sent me is um, I probably would have got a size bigger. I told them I'm a 10 and a half, 11. This is a 10 and a half. It's a little, little tight. So if I ever bought another pair, I would definitely would get a, a size 11. I don't know if that, you know, maybe that's gonna be the case for you. Barefoot Shoes, man, they're soft. They're suede. They're flat. They feel good and I think they're weird stylish. And look, it got a freaking bear on it. It got a bear paw on it. The name of my high school football team were the Bruins. And so it's like I'm rocking old Bruins shoes. Bruins shoes, check them out. So, I mean, if you're into barefoot shoes, go check them out. These are cool, right? This is, this is not a sponsored video, by the way. I'm not an affiliate or anything like that, but I do appreciate if you're watching barefoot feet peeps, uh, you sent me to the gift box that included this. And look, man, it don't get any better. I could smell the leather from here. These. Mm, pure. You can see that I've been rocking them. I, I wear them as I walk my dogs. These are barefoots. Once again, flat, comfortable, leather, not made in China, made in Mexico, right? My Mexican brothers. So I wear Mexican shoes, not Chinese shoes, nothing against Chinese people. I don't wanna buy Chinese shit. I don't even wanna buy Mexican shit, but I'll take it because they're our neighbors and, and I might have some Mexican in me, right? But anyway, enough of the racial stuff. These are amazing, they're great. Again, I probably would've got a size 11 instead of a size uh, 10 and a half. These are what Rich Graham wears. He wears these and he's, he's like a, He's a former Navy SEAL, but he's like a ninja. This guy is like, he moves so smooth, he'll sneak up on you and choke you before you even know that he's in the room. He's a cool dude. But this is what he wears. And so guy, like I, if a guy like that that I look up to wears these shoes, you know for sure I'm gonna be rocking them. But let me show you just a few other things here. So what I did, I did know that there were other brands later on and I was rocking these Lems. I, these are okay. They're, they're, I like the way they look because, of course, they're green, and you know, green's my color. I'm a camo dude. But they're flat, and they're they're a bit wider. They're okay. They're called lems. The whole thing is that they're natural-ish shoes. I don't like how they flip up like this, and 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 I don't like how thick this is. I, they call them barefoot-friendly shoes, but I, if I give these a zero. I'll give these uh, I'll give these a C, what's a C minus, like a 70? I'll give these a 70. 100%, 0%, 70, good enough, right? They're not bad. Um, and then just a few other things here. So I also, these, I don't need, these are called Keens. They're flat, I like wearing open toe shoes. I live in Florida, these are sort of flat. What I love most about them is how wide they are so my feet can spread while I'm walking on the ground. These are cool, I'll lift in these, I'll walk in these, I'll go to the restaurant in these, you know? Jesus shoes, people make fun of me sometimes. When I was a kid, they would make fun of me because even when I was young, I'd wear sandals. Uh, my parents are Caribbean, right? So we wear barefoot stuff, right? My, I, in fact, my dad grew up with no shoes. My dad grew up with no suit, shoes. My dad grew up with zero shoes, like literal zero shoes, right? And so, uh, so that's it, those are, all my, those are all my shoes, right? Rock climbing shoes, look almost like the damn Nikes. Never buy Nikes, I'll never buy Nikes again. And it's not because of the sweatshops, because your shit is garbage. And then just one more, another shout to, to Mark Bell in the podcast. 
he uh he was wearing these sh socks one day and, and I went and bought a pair of them my own because they help open up the toes. And if you're wearing shoes that are wide enough, you could wear these, they go in between your toes and they keep them spread, right? So if you got cramped toes, right? Like I did when I was wearing stupid shoes that I was running on to destroy my football career, these, your finger, your toes will go through them and they'll open them up. So you could rock these. Barefoot Shoes sent me a couple like glove toes shoes, like, you know, but uh, or glove, glove socks, you know? So like my, the toe fingers, I haven't put those on. I've never wore those, anything like that before. I like to wear my shoes barefoot, but in the summertime they start to stink, so I might rock those also. But these are good, they're almost like therapeutic. And when I first started rocking them, they hurt my feet, but then um, after some time they started feeling better, and now I don't even notice it. I put it on, I forget that I even have them on. One last pair, let me just show you. These are what I'm wearing right now. Somebody asked me about them. These are called me Mephizo, Mephizos, right? And I got, and these are like where I wear around my house. These are like my, these are like my comfortable, home shoes, and so I don't wear slippers or sandals, uh, or uh, s slippers? What do people wear in their house, like Birkenstocks? Anyway, so I wear these around the house, incredibly comfortable, incredibly wide, super flat, forgot to mention them because they're on my feet right now, and I probably wear those more than anything, and of course, you know, I got a pair of lifting shoes here. I wear these very sparingly because, you know, but anytime I'm doing sort of like, overhead pressing and some kinds of squats, I'll wear these, but um, lifting, these are my lifting shoes for now, dude. So anyway, I hope this is helpful to you. If your feet are fucked up, it's probably because you're wearing the wrong shoes. We gotta open up our feet and our feet should be like fingers. Our toes should be like fingers. They should be able, you should be able to articulate your toes the same way we do with our fingers. And there are a lot of different foot exercises you can do, just go look it up on Instagram. There's different channels that are, that are dedicated to foot strength and articulation and, motive and, and uh, agility and things like that. But I'm a firm believer that if we develop from the ground up, our whole, it will revolutionize our posture, our, our mechanics, and our abilities as athletes. I wish somebody told me this. I wish this was even a thing when I was 19 years old playing football. Maybe... Well, maybe I would have been in the NFL, but then I wouldn't be here with y'all, right? Everything works out for a reason. That's it. That's all. Love y'all. Done.